Well, let's uh, talk to an MEP who's following all this with a keen eye, the UK Independence Party leader, Nigel Farage, who's in Brussels for us now. Uh, thank you for joining us. You're a long-standing EU critic, and uh, Britain has said no to tighter controls, leaving Euro countries to sort themselves out, really. Surely the UK is now being pushed further aside. Well, let's hope so, because <laughs> we don't want to be part of a political union. We don't want to be part of an economic and monetary union. Uh, what David Cameron has done uh, is to say, look, can we have some small concessions, please? President Sarkozy told him to take a running jump, and he's vetoed the treaty. So on the face of it, I should be cheering David Cameron and say, isn't this marvellous that a British Prime Minister has finally stood up and said something? But of course, the reality is that these 17 countries are determined to press on with this Euro project, mistaken though I believe that is, and it actually leaves Britain now in a really difficult position because we're still members of the Union, we're still bound by all its legislation, and yet what's perfectly clear is that henceforth we will have no influence whatsoever. And actually what I'm getting in, in, in the hall today from journalists from all over Europe is that Britain is now despised. So I think what will happen now back in the United Kingdom is we're about to launch into a very big national debate about whether we should be members of this union at all. But if these countries are going to push on, as you say, uh, can the 17 euro using nations solve this by themselves? Well, listen, the word solve implies that there is some easy solution to hand. There isn't. The euro is a misconstruction. Countries like Greece and Portugal should never have joined it in the first place. And by increasing the size of bailout funds, uh, by taking more power from democratic nation states to the centre, does nothing to address the fundamental problem that Greece and Germany cannot live together inside a single economic and monetary union. Well, that's interesting. So if there's a separate financially based group within the EU, are you saying this could lead to a split in the union then? I think what we saw in the early hours of this morning was the biggest split in the European Union in 50 years. You know, the United Kingdom has been a member of this thing since 1973. We're a big economy. We're an important country. And whether David Cameron knows it or not, what he did last night was the first step towards the exit door. How easy will it be for those countries to convince their populations about facing tighter controls? We hear a lot about the politicians, but what will the people think of all this? Believe you me, if we were to put this euro package to the electorates of Greece, of Portugal, of Ireland, of Italy, of Spain, they would all say no. Because, you know, the better solution is to have their own currencies back, to have a successful competitive devaluation, and then and only then to put in place the kind of austerity measures that are needed to get their borrowing back under any sort of control. Uh, and, and really, these countries now find themselves, these electorates find themselves, trapped inside an economic prison that is called the euro. Their democracy has been stripped from them. And my fear is that the kind of civil disobedience and civil disorder that you've already seen on the streets of Greece will multiply. Now, the, the talks are not over yet, though. Markets are already jittery because they uh, well, couldn't find the unified solution. If you were a betting man, what would your prediction be of how the next crucial 24 hours will actually pan out? I think in the next 24 hours, the 17 uh, politicians, not peoples, um, will agree that they are going to push on, uh, that they are going to give incredible dictatorial powers to unelected bureaucrats based in Brussels. Uh, the markets will remain extremely nervous. And remember that even the package they're talking about today will take until March to implement. And I think in the meantime, uh, the Eurozone and particularly the Mediterranean countries are extremely vulnerable indeed. And I do not discount uh, that a breakdown in the markets will overwhelm the whole Euro problem and that the Eurozone countries and the EU institutions will find themselves simply not big enough to cope with it. Uh, those Mediterranean countries you mentioned, if, if any of them should leave the Euro, won't that cause terrible trouble in itself? Well, listen, the argument always is that we must maintain the status quo because if we don't, the sky will fall in and there will be disaster. Uh, just look at what happened to Iceland. You know, Iceland came through this credit crunch in the most horrendous situation. Several of her banks went bust, um, her currency collapsed, interest rates soared, but three years on, three years on, the Icelandics have a growth projection next year of 3% and things are going well. And what it says to me is that if you're stuck in a bad marriage, the best thing to do is to end the marriage and start again. And I see no hope at all 
for the Greek economy stuck inside this economic prison that is called the Euro. Okay, Nigel Farage, European MEP and leader of the UK Independence Party. Uh, thank you for your views here on RT. Thank you.